that said, here is money wow. for you to record your first CDs. And her father gave Tony Bennett his start mm -hmm. in Kansas City, put money behind him to make him a star. She said, so I want to do something like my daddy, and I believe in you. And so when it hit, when it, I mean, she was a friend of mine before her son was one of my best friends. And so I called her and I said, how are you doing? She goes, I'm a little, little afraid. I don't even know how to begin to think. And I sat down and wrote the song that day. And it was, I, I started it that day and, and went to bed that in the morning. It was finished in my mind. And I sat down and just played it and recorded it and, and turned it over. And it's been, it's been there all these years and so, so many people have sung it since then you know well so. and and that's something that I just want to remind, remind people because he comes on the show and he's gracious as this with his presence but he does he he is an entertainer and that's a profession and that's one of the things that i think is you know with people looking for un unique branding slaves in the world, the majority of which are children. Um, human trafficking is a big deal. It's bigger than you even know. 50 to 60,000 people get imported into the United States every year and have their passports stolen, and, and they're sold into all kinds of slavery. And it's an ugly, dirty thing, um, so much so that when the when National Geographic finally decided to run the article, in every part of the world, the article that was run on the front cover of the National Geographic, there was the father and the son the father who found his son after five years of slavery. And in the United States, they're so terrified of the subject that it was a, a zebra and its cult on the front cover. Because the people in the United States or whoever just don't think the Americans are ready for the story. But when you know that many of our sons and daughters travel abroad and some of them get kidnapped and sold into slavery, you better have an, an idea. And you better wake up and realize that this is a real thing. So much so, my daughter was six years old when we, when we recorded it, and she's 19 now. Um, when, she, when she got to school, when she got to Harvard, she and some of her classmates sat down and wrote a curriculum on human trafficking. And it is the first curriculum written by students that Harvard has ever adopted, not as, a, not as an elective course, but as a gen ed course. So no matter what degree you get at Harvard, you can take this human trafficking course, and it'll count towards your degree. This semester was the first semester that it was active. Maybe my daughter showed up at the class just to see, and it was packed. It was a lecture hall, 200-plus people there in the class to take the class. And they were riveted. I mean, they were just all focused because the subject matter is so profound. So when Harvard does something, usually everybody else follows and understands that this is a big deal. Is it a big issue here in America as compared to anywhere else? Or, or is if it people are being sold into slavery... Isn't it a big deal everywhere? Well, define slavery. Where you, you can't leave. Yeah. You're being you're forced into labor. Yeah. You're being forced into sexual acts. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, just, it's not just labor. It's sexual human trafficking. And, I mean, you, uh, this is probably not the right show to do yeah. that on because it's so graphic and so ugly. And that would be an interesting you, you, special. You, you cannot believe the things. I mean, if I were to sit here and tell you now you would have to put a disclaimer on the show. Okay. So, I mean, I'm just, it, it chokes me up just thinking about it. And so I sat down and wrote the song. Uh, Kevin Bales wrote a, wrote a book called Disposable People because there were parts of the world where you could actually purchase a person for 25 cents. Wow. You don't, I mean, any, 
And they and they didn't care if you brought them back. Dead We're or talking alive. bodies floating down the river. We're talking children being sold into slavery by their own parents for a big screen television. Mm -hmm. the, the children come back with AIDS, and the jungle absorbs them. Oh, that's horrible. You can't. I mean, I'm telling you. So, so let's not even. Let, well, let's, is there a song? I'd love to hear that. Well, so the song is written specifically about uh, that particular thing, and it's it's quite. It the song is is a song of affirmation. Um, You're gonna play a little bit of I'll it. Play a little, I'll, I'll play a little bit of it for you. Um, one second. It's called. And this if, is one you wrote. Yes, yeah, it's, it's called. If you listen, you will hear. And really, it's an uplifting song. It doesn't. I mean, mm. you can apply this song to to other things as absolutely. well. Absolutely. Yes, it's I just a a song of awareness. Song. Yes. Mm. yes. But uh, um, listen, uh, on the wind, you hear their voices. Uh, um, just, I'll just play it for you. Okay. But anyway, I don't, for some reason, it's not. It's only getting the mono side of it. So anyway, the the point is, and I apologize. So That's sorry, okay. Is that um, the music tr uh, transports the listener to a place that they wouldn't otherwise understand? I mean, it just says things that helps you understand. Um, won't you listen? Uh, uh, hear the reverie of the oppressor. They are dancing on the backs of their brothers for their greed, for their pleasure. Will it take all the king's horses and all the king's men to help us, to force us all to open our ears? Because if you listen, you will hear the voices of a, of a million souls, innocent, hopeful souls, into slavery bought and sold. If you listen, you will hear. Um, and that's, that's the message. If you listen, you'll hear it. And if you hear it, you can't not do something. You know? So, I mean, and, and it's a small Mm -hmm. It's one step but at a time. But that's just one of the things that you wrote, and that's the point. And and are you where are you are you you're playing here in Dallas? I mean, I know you go all over, but when can we see you again here locally live? I'll be um I'll be playing on and off at Bailey's until okay. that's I'm a working. Good place to come. Mm -hmm. I'm still working on on the 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 ultimate venue, and and this particular place and I are still in talks, and I'm hope I want to be able to announce it very very soon. Yeah, I want you to be able to come, do you know like do a little broadcast come back show. and be broadcasted and all those things. But we'll we, that's what we'll just pray and chant. That'd be wonderful. I want I want to I want to broadcast from there live, and I want to bring some of my friends that I've done these shows with uh, in town and and uh, well, make that some. That would be great. Wouldn't that be nice to just have have you come up to to this venue? It's so beautiful there too, and I I want to tell you so yeah, bad, but you know don't. I don't want to mess it up. Thank but anyway, so. Um, but Bailey, as you do, that's over there by North Park. I like that. My my father went there, and, and a lot of the people that I know that are on Facebook. Yes. They like to go to the scene. They've got a dance floor, and do you play now? What? When you, when you have your who's with your group when you play that? Place? I have some amazing um, I have some amazing artists uh, that perform with me: drummer, bass player, okay. and keys. And it's different depending on the week. Um, I have some some amazing. My first drummer that I lost, I lost him to Seal and Sting <laughs> and Steely Dan. Oh dear. And so, well, you know, a small band. Just just how you know? Isn't that awful that they would no. dare do that to no. me? You know what I mean? How terrible is that? But I mean, how could you tell? The, how could you tell them no, no? Well, you wouldn't. The yeah, whole yeah. point is that. When you do something great and you challenge each other, you become better and better and better, yeah. and they move. What a wonderful uh, thing. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I was talking to Catherine on the way up here, and I've had so many people say to me, oh, I just, I just, I want you to be famous. I want you to be a star. I want to see you at the Grammys. And I said, well, when it's time, I'll do that. But right now, I measure my success not by fame and not by money. Uh, but by the success of my children and the quality of my relationship with my wife. And that, that comes from a proper, healthy, and balanced perspective on what is truly success. Most people measure success by money. Money is, an, money is a, let's see, it's a result of living a life of love. You know, you love and you give, you find a way to give. And when you know that what you take takes way more time, if your gift requires a huge sacrifice of love from yourself, and you and like I personally can't do what I do and travel as much as I need to travel in order to, to be that person because I still have children at home and I still have my wife and I can't yeah. go together. And so until, and I'm not willing to sacrifice. You know, there's that window of time when you can live in your car. Well, you, you know, know yeah, yeah, and I did it's that, just never comfortable. It's never comfortable. It's never it's comfortable. comfortable. It doesn't matter what kind of car it is. It, it does is, not when matter. I say that, I mean, when you're young and, you, and, 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 and you've got, it's that youthful exuberance, but you, then you get a family and everything else that you, that 
those things that you you've got to weigh them and you did travel an awful lot when you went with the the uh, the uh, cruise lines and you do private but you I've do had, private had, parties I've and had play several for different time. phases to my career yeah i had the phase of my career in you to walk down the sidewalk and not have rage. Mm -hmm. Do you have enough love to be when you're in a public place and you're talking to someone like if you're mm -hmm. going through a checkout or if you're having put your phone away and pay attention to the person who is running this economy because the salespeople who sell you things, they're the ones, they're the workforce that keep the economy going. If they don't sell... Yeah, and, I, and, 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 and I know that you actually have a background in motivating salespeople and doing all these talks, but I've got to wrap up because I've got oh, okay. over here. Okay. And, and, and what I want you to be able to do is I want to be able to fix what the music is so that when she gets through, maybe we can... Because I want you to part. She's going to be talking about the Amanda Marie Foundation. Oh, that's huge. Yeah, that's very that's, huge. Yes, yeah, so we want to spend some good time on that. And, and so maybe at the end... If we get this, this at the uh, thing, you will send us. Send us what I love song. about her story is that she's parenting long after. Yes, she is. And she's parenting our children long after the loss of her own. That's it's huge. So. Yeah.